Hello and welcome to lecture 25 for Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at the second lecture on the Gram-Schmidt process. So in lecture 24, we were actually setting up the framework and the tools that we would need in order to describe the uh, Gram-Schmidt process. Today's lecture is based upon section 6.3 and 6.4 in the textbook. You should notice that when you go look at that section, they're talking about things about inner products. And so whenever you see an inner product there in that book, just let me just say that this is just going to be, in our case, the dot product of two vectors in case you see this notation in those sections. So where our goal today is actually to start off by explaining what the Gram-Schmidt process is, and then I'll talk a little bit about projections to kind of justify why this process actually works. In a second linear algebra course, you would actually go into the details about why all, all these pieces would work. But today, what we want to get across is the process of the Gram-Schmidt. Okay, so let's... Uh, make myself disappear there, and let's just kind of do a little recap. So last time we talked about orthogonal and orthonormal bases. So these are bases for our vector space that first are orthogonal, which means that all the vectors are perpendicular to each other, and orthonormal means that uh, all the bases vectors have length or norm one. And given any orthogonal basis, you can convert it easily into an orthonormal basis. And we talked about that. So over here we have orthogonal basis, over here we have an orthonormal basis, and to go from here to here, you normalize your vectors. So that just means rescaling your vectors so they all have the proper length. So in today's class, what we want to do is say, well, how do I get my hands on the orthogonal basis? somebody hands me a basis for my vector space, so let's say I have any basis, and what I want to do is I want to convert it into an orthogonal basis. Can we do that? Okay, and that's what we're going to learn today, and that's one way to think about exactly what the Gram-Schmidt process does is it takes something that's a, a basis for a vector space and turns it into an orthogonal basis. And then using what we learned from last class, we can take that orthogonal basis and turn it into an orthonormal basis. Okay. So without much further ado, let me just actually state the Gram-Schmidt process, and then we'll justify why it works before. So you're starting off with some sort of uh, collection of vectors and I wrote that wrong, that should be written like this, as a subset of Rn's, and it's a basis. And how do we figure out what our orthogonal basis is? Well, the first vector, we're just gonna say, well, let it just be the first vector in my, my collection S. Now I wanna make my second vector. So how should I make my second vector? Well, I'm gonna take X2, and I'm going to subtract it from x2 dotted with my first vector that I've already found, divided by v1 dotted with itself. And this is a coefficient of the vector v1. So I'm kind of uh, taking a scalar multiple of my first vector and subtracting it from x2. Now I'm going to look at v3. And hopefully you'll see how the pattern is after a couple examples here. So you take x3, and now you're going to take x3 dotted with v1 divided by the dot product of v1 with itself, multiplied by v1, and then you're going to subtract x3 dotted with, not, um, with v2, because I've already found v2, divided by v2 dotted with itself, times the vector v2. And as you can hopefully see the pattern here, is you're taking the, the current vector of your basis, and then you're forming some particular dot products with the vectors you've already have, and you're doing scalar multiples of those vectors. And you work your, you keep carrying through. Okay, so you carry on. And your last vector then would be taking your vector xn, and you're going to do xn dotted with v1 over v1 dotted with v1. That's your coefficient of v1. And then you're going to subtract off xn dotted with v2 with, divided by v2 dot, 
dotted with B2, B2, and then you carry all the way down till you get to Vn minus 1. And then Vn minus 1 dotted with itself. And that's the coefficient of Vn minus 1. Now, just before I go any further, because depending upon which textbook you're looking at, uh, I want to point out here that V1 dotted with itself is the exact same thing as the norm of VI squared. Okay, And some books, if you're looking at some books or maybe you're looking at Wikipedia, you may see in the denominator this expression. Okay, so uh, I have a whole bunch of VIs dotted with itself, and some books will write it in particular with this expression right here. Okay, so this is the Gram Schmidt process, and let me just write the probably the most, oops, get rid of that. Let me write the most important part about this process is when you're done, you get a collection of vectors, you get n vectors. And the property is that this is an orthogonal basis for Rn. So you've used your vector axes to make a new set of vectors V1 through Vn that happens to be not only a basis for Rn, but it's also going to be an orthogonal basis. And before we pause to give an example, let me just make one comment here is that the statement says that you're given a basis for, um, oh, actually, let me rewrite that because it's not even clear here. We have a basis of Rn. So x1 through xn is a basis of Rn. Um, but you don't actually need that strong hypothesis that you only have a basis for Rn. Let's say you have a subspace. W and W1 through WT T is a basis for the subspace, then if you just apply the Gram-Schmidt process to that set, what you're going to do is just get an orthogonal basis for W. Okay, So the, for, the formula has a lot of things to remember, but it's not that hard to use, and we'll do an example in the next part of today's lecture.